Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to talk about a case of post-MI cardiogenic shock uh, due to LV outflow tract obstruction. The patient is a beloved 60-year-old uh, uh, local PCP who uh, has always been healthy, uh, but who presented from his office with chest pain while he was seeing patients. Um, in the ED, he was uh, hypertensive and diaphoretic. Now, he tried to be stoic, but was clearly uncomfortable. His ECG showed five millimeters of anterior ST elevations, and we took him straight to the cath lab. So on cath, his RCA and circumflex were fine. Um, the LED is shown, and you can clearly see the culprit, uh, an acute uh, thrombotic occlusion of the mid-LED. So we went right to work. Uh, the uh, soft thrombus wired easily uh, with a BMW wire, and I used my standard STEMI balloon, a 25 by 12 millimeter uh, compliant balloon uh, to uh, reestablish flow. And after POBA, uh, flow was restored and the, pa uh, the, chest, uh, the patient's chest pain subsided and his uh, ST segments uh, normalized. Now you can see that there is a long segment of disease um, from the proximal uh, to mid LED. I stented the uh, proximal to mid LED with overlapping uh, 40 and 3.5 millimeter DES, which I then post dilated at uh, high pressure uh, with uh, 375 and 40 uh, uh, NC balloons. I then did IVIS, uh, which showed a good stent apposition and uh, expansion, and there was no obvious uh, uh, stent edge uh, dissection. So here is the uh, final angiographic result, uh, which I thought was uh, quite nice. Uh, the uh, jailed uh, diagonal uh, was a bit pinched, uh, but there was Timmy 3 flow, so uh, I decided to leave it alone. Uh, his uh, vitals looked quite good. Uh, he was uh, normal tensive and had only uh, minimal uh, residual chest pain. He had a bit of an, L, uh, an oxygen requirement, and um, his um, LVDP, uh, not surprisingly, was uh, quite high, so I told the ICU uh, that uh, he uh, needed to be uh, diuresed. So um, he was uh, moved to the ICU around uh, 6 p.m., and uh, he looked good. Um, after uh, he was settled in, uh, the nurse uh, gave him a dose of IV Lasix uh, around uh, 6.30, and uh, his wife uh, came to the room uh, around that time. But um, over the uh, next hour and a half, uh, his blood pressure uh, gradually uh, became uh, lower. Uh, at uh, 8 p.m., uh, the uh, night shift nurse, who uh, is just coming on, uh, informs the intensivist about the, uh, uh, the gradually uh, drifting uh, blood pressure. Uh, he uh, places an order for levofed and uh, asks uh, for an ECG. The ECG showed anterior biphasic and inverted T waves, uh, which is not unexpected after his anterior STEMI. So at 8.15, uh, the nurse uh, starts levofed, and uh, the blood pressure at that time uh, was uh, 96 over 50. So uh, blood pressure continues to drift lower. At 8.45, uh, the nurse uh, increases levofed and again uh, calls the intensivist. Uh, the intensivist uh, then calls me. Uh, tells me what happened, what's, what's, uh, what's happening. Uh, I was worried. Uh, I thought that uh, he was developing worsening pump failure, and I decided to call in the cath lab for an urgent right heart cath uh, with a possible balloon pump or, or, or impella. Ten minutes later, uh, his blood pressure is now down to 78 over 40. Uh, uh, norepinephrine uh, is uh, increased again, and now dopamine is started. Uh, the, vis uh, the patient is now uh, visibly short of breath, and um, he's placed on a 100% uh, non rebreather And at uh, 910, uh, both uh, norepinephrine and dopamine are uh, maxed out, and uh, the intensivist is uh, calling for a third presser. At 9.15, uh, the uh, cath, uh, cath lab team arrives at bedside, and I get there about five minutes later. Uh, the patient looked absolutely awful. Uh, he was pale, diaphoretic, uh, he was using accessory muscles, and he looked like uh, he was about to code. I feared the worst, maybe a mechanical rupture, and I called uh, cardiac surgery uh, to have them on standby, and I also called uh, for the uh, echo machine. So um, cardiogenic shock post-MI is unfortunately not uncommon and is frequently due to worsening pump failure from um, uh, myocardial inflammation and edema. Uh, poor cardiac output then causes even worse coronary perfusion, uh, which then causes further pump failure and continuation of a uh, downward spiral. 
on the sky shock scale, um, our patient at this point is in stage D, uh, going into stage E, uh, deteriorating and uh, looked like it was nearing a circulatory collapse. So the key for these patients is to break the downward spiral as quickly as possible. Uh, there are numerous uh, decision algorithms for cardiogenic shock, and here's a good one published in Jack a few years ago. But in essence, they all emphasize early activation of an interdisciplinary uh, shock team, uh, right heart catheterization to inform management decision, and getting the patient on strong mechanical circulatory support as early as possible. The key is to offload uh, the injured heart. Impella for patients who are still oxygenating and ECMO uh, for patients who are not. And some patients will uh, require both. And if your institution does not have Impella or ECMO, then uh, balloon pump placement with transfer to an Impella or ECMO center uh, as fast as possible. The other possibility, of course, is a mechanical uh, catastrophe. Uh, free wall rupture is the most feared uh, with an exceedingly high mortality and often a sudden cardiac death. Rupture of the ventricular septum is nearly as dire uh, with a mortality rate of uh, 30 to 40%. And patients with uh, circumflex or RCA STEMIs can also develop uh, papillary muscle rupture and torrential uh, mitral regurgitation. Uh, their prognosis is not great either. Uh, these patients will usually need emergency uh, cardiac surgery. So here is our patient's echo uh, in the ICU. And thankfully, um, there was no uh, mechanical catastrophe. Uh, there is no pericardial fusion and no free wall rupture. Uh, there was no obvious VSD and there was no obvious MR. However, uh, I noticed that the base was exceedingly hyperdynamic. The septal and lateral walls were nearly banging into each other and the intracavitary gradient uh, was nearly 30 millimeters of mercury. So then it finally dawned on me. Uh, could this be left ventricular outflow tract obstruction? So in mid to distal LED STEMI, uh, the apex often becomes akinetic, uh, but the base of the heart is spared. And some patients can then develop compensatory uh, basal hypercontractility, which can obstruct the LV outflow tract and lead to hypotension and then shock. The uh, usual treatments for shock all make this worse. Diuretics, afterall reduction, and balloon pumps all help reduce the load on the ventricle, but this makes it easier for the ventricle to pump, and it's usually good for the failing heart, but in the case of dynamic outflow tract obstruction, these therapies also allow the base to squeeze even harder, which then worsens the obstruction. Inotropes like levofed uh, increase cardiac contractility, but this then makes the base squeeze even harder, which also worsens the obstruction. And after getting 40 milliliters of IV Lasix on my order, after arriving to the ICU, our patient with possible dynamic LV outflow tract obstruction has been getting higher and higher doses of levofed and dopamine all night. So the treatment is to reverse everything we've been doing. Stop diuretics, give fluids, stop afterload reduction, give something like uh, neosinephrine to, to increase uh, afterload, stop nitrates, stop inotropes. In fact, give a negative inotropic agent uh, like a beta blocker, uh, metoprolol or, or esmolol, and cancel the balloon pump. So that's what we did. Um, I asked for a wide open bolus of fluid. I asked the nurse to stop levofed and dopamine and give a dose of IV metoprolol. And admittedly, she asked me twice if uh, I was sure. I also asked her to hang an esmolol drip and have a phenylephrine on standby in case we needed something for blood pressure. And I uh, called off the cath lab. And uh, to my utter relief, uh, the effect was quite dramatic. Uh, blood pressure with improved within 10 minutes, blood pressure up to 110 over 70. And I, as you can see from the repeat echo 20 minutes after that, uh, it showed uh, there was a decrease of basal contractility with now a negligible intracavitary uh, gradient. And the patient was already feeling better. He was eventually converted to an oral beta blocker, and thankfully, uh, the rest of his hospital course was uneventful, and he was discharged home uh, a couple of days later. All right, um, take-home messages. Um, for sudden worsening of cardiogenic shock post-MI, always consider a progressive pump failure, uh, which uh, would require rapid uh, escalation of mechanical uh, circulatory support, 
or a mechanical catastrophe uh, which uh, would uh, require emergency surgery. But especially in cases of mid to distal LAD STEMI, also consider the possibility of L uh, LV outflow tract obstruction. These patients will deteriorate quickly uh, with standard uh, cardiogenic shock therapy. ECHO is helpful to make the diagnosis. Uh, these patients will need fluid resuscitation, not diuretics, beta blockers, not inotropes, and increased afterload, not afterload reduction. Thank you for watching.